Welcome back. It's Thursday, March 16th in the NBA. My three favorite picks are on the way. Let's recap yesterday. That way, two in one day, we will take that. De'Aaron Fox was over 25 and a half points, and Tyler Hero goes over 24 and a half points plus rebounds. Our loser of the day, Jason Tatum, does not get over 28 and a half points. I think it went 0 for 8 from the three-point line. If you made any of those, we probably would have hit that. But either way, a six and one run. Day two of our ladder challenge at two, so day three will be on the way. Let's keep it going today. What do you guys say? If you are new, go down below. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button too. Drop your favorite plays. March Madness starts today. And while I won't have any March Madness plays, I will be watching. So it'll be electric to watch the college basketball tournament. It's going to be a blast. And if you've been, we've been helping you guys make some money and you want to support the channel, go down below, hit that join button, become a CLS All-Star. It's our YouTube membership. You get all our plays early, probably about 90 minutes before the, the videos actually drop. Sometimes even longer than that, because sometimes it takes longer to edit. And it'll cost $3 a month. You could probably make that back and just juice on the day, because that's why all the lines move is because the CLS All-Stars are hammering them. So if you ever want to get the plays early, support the channel, go down below, hit the top link in the description, or it's probably easier to click that join button next to our channel name down below either way let's hop into our favorite plays though we got three of them today and we're going to start with and if you're ever curious the plays are in written format under the community tab for those all-stars out there let's dive into our favorite plays though the first one not sure if he's on the thumbnail or not but his name is deandre ayton i like his over 18 and a half points minus 115 on bet 365 now if the line goes up to 19 and a half which it probably does i don't mind it there ayton has ended on 19 only once this season in fact Normally with Aiton, you normally, I mean, knock on wood, normally you like, he's normally he's more of an even score. He normally ends with like 16, 18, 20, 22. Normally doesn't hit a lot of free throws, and normally he's just not really hitting a lot of three-pointers out there. And Aiton has actually landed on 18 on the bad side of the hook four different games this year. So if you want to buy it down to 18, I wouldn't call you crazy. Now, Kevin Durant still sidelined. So DeAndre Aiton is the number two guy on this offense. He's not number one. That's Devin Booker, and Booker's going to get his tonight. But I like Aiton to continue what he's been doing. And over the last three games, when Durant went down, he scored 20. 22, 27, and 16 points. And, you know, look at last game. Probably should have gone over. He had 16 points with about seven minutes left in the third quarter. Got into foul trouble pretty much the whole game. He went eight for 19, 42% from the field. He had five fouls, only played 25 minutes. A bad game all around. So I think he bounces back here. But let's look at Aiton over these last three games, 15, 19, and 19 field goal attempts. Look, I can't guarantee he shoots 15 plus times tonight. I can't. I don't shoot the ball out there. And Aiton does have some games where he just is a no show. But he's obviously needed on this team. And they don't really have a lot of scoring around him. Devin Booker, obviously, he'll get his. He'll probably drop 30 today. But outside of him, you got Torrey Craig. He's in the lineup. Maybe he might be out today. Josh Akogi. You got Chris Paul, who's kind of declining. Doesn't really shoot as much these days. More of a facilitator. And he's always looking for DeAndre Aiton. So they kind of need Aiton to be out there and be aggressive. Obviously, when Durant comes back, Aiton kind of gets absolutely no usage. But without Durant out there. We should see Aiton at least attempt 12 shots today, hopefully 15. If we get 19, this should be a no sweat bet because Aiton is over this line in 20 of 23 games with 15 plus field goal attempts, 15 plus shot attempts. If he shoots the ball, he's going to score. It's a guy that shoots 59% from the field coming off a really bad game. And we've seen the centers against the Magic have done pretty well. 11 of the last 12 centers with just 12 or more field goal attempts have scored at least 20 points against the Magic. They've been giving up some big games to guys that actually are aggressive as a center. And we've seen Aiton's last four against this Orlando Magic team. Obviously, the team has changed a ton, so like we don't really want to buy into a lot of this hype, but 21, 17, 21, and 14 points. So that's 12, but he only attempted 12, 11, 19, and 12 field goal attempts. So barely getting to 12 field goal attempts. I think he sees more usage today, and if he sees more usage, probably going to score in two of those games where he went under. You know, they play 25 and 26 minutes. You could argue this could be a blowout as the Suns are at home, as the Magic travel to, to Phoenix to take on them, but 83% of people are on uh, the bets are on Suns minus seven. It just looks too easy. Yeah, DeAndre Ayton, I think, gets his run in the fourth quarter. Maybe this is a closer game. Maybe the Magic, who have been playing pretty well as of late, keep this game close. I like Ayton as the number two option behind Booker. I like him to get us 20 points. We'll take his over 18 and a half, but I like it at 19 and a half as well. Let's keep it moving, though. We got an under. The unders are back, and we're going with this guy, Scotty Barnes of the Toronto Raptors, under 29 and a half points, rebounds, and assists, currently minus 110 on DraftKings. If this line goes to 28 and a half, you can take it there if you want individual line i liked his under in points at 17 and a half probably the most out of any of his lines now let's talk about barnes because the last time we took his props hey he treated us we took his pra line at 25 and a half he nearly doubled it he had 48 pras and he's been quietly pretty good over the last three games in fact he's at 29 48 and 30 pra so you see this line pretty dialed in as he landed on 29 on the hook on one good side hook on the bad side for the under and then he had one crazy game against the lakers that we backed him there but we've seen the last three games Barnes, 21, 19, and 16 field goal attempts. In my opinion, 
very unsustainable for him to see that much much usage in fact over his last 23 games prior to that run he'd only attempted more than 15 shots twice so the fact he's done it in three straight games i just think today's a, a barn a barn stinker that's just what he does you normally when you start to trust him in some overs you boom it hits it with like a 15 pra game you're like what the heck was that and honestly if i had to go on a long shot i think today is a big pascal siakam game now you might be like what the heck pascal siakam has sucked and yes I will not lie to you, Siakam has not been very good, but explain to me why Siakam's line was 21 and a half. He went out there and gave him 12 points, two games in a row, and the Bucks were like, you know what? I like what we've seen. I'll move it up to 22 and a half points. Yeah, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Same thing for his PRA line. So I think this is a big Pascal Siakam game. He's notoriously played very well against the Thunder as well. Whereas you've seen a guy like Scotty Barnes kind of play second, third, fourth fiddle on this offense. And if Siakam is cooking, Van Vliet's still going to be doing his thing. OG Ananobi gets his usage. Gary Trent Jr. You see Jakob Pearl get his usage too. So if Barnes somehow, you know, not real unrealistically somehow drops back to, you know, 10 to 14 field goal attempts, we should be in a good spot here. Barnes is under this line in 17 of his last 25 games. If the line goes down one, he's under that in 15 of his last 25. In fact, when Scotty Barnes sees less than 15 shot attempts, he's under this line in 19 of his last 25 games with less than 15 shots. So I don't think this is a big game where Scotty Barnes needed to shoot a ton. I don't think this matchup plays well into his strengths. And in his last two games versus OKC, 23 and 22 PRAs. Over his last the last seven games, the Thunder, second best defensive rating in the league, the sixth fewest points per game in the paint allowed look if they can turn scotty barnes into a three-point jump shooter i will live with this any day of the week scotty barnes not the best three-point shooter in the league only been hitting like one three a game if that some games not even one three and over the last two games he shot well above 50 percent from the field i think he's due a stinker i think siakam plays well tonight it's a bounce back i am 2-0 on raptors props since i removed their team ban I'm making it 3 0 tonight. We're riding with Scotty Barnes under 29 and a half PRAs. I like his points under as an individual leg, but PRAs I think is a little bit safer. Hopefully, we'll take that under. Now, for my third and final play of the day, we're going back to some overs, and it's going to be a guy that's also been stinking up just like Pascal Siakam. It's Mr. Jamal Murray of the Denver Nuggets over 20 and a half points, currently minus 117 on Barstool. Now, I have no idea what time you're watching this video, but if you are watching this video and this far into it, I appreciate you for watching it. Now, number two, as I record this at, we're at 8.04 a.m., there's really not a lot of lines out there for Jamal Murray. Currently, FanDuel has one, Betway, Points Bet had one, but the guys like DraftKings, BetMGM, Caesars, all don't have a line for Murray. So, honest and Pinnacle, the sharpest book in the world, does not have a line for Murray. So, there's a realistic possibility this line could open at 22 and a half. Very find that very hard to believe or they even open it up even lower. So this could be a very bad line by the time it comes out, but I'm gonna ride with Jamal Murray. And there's a couple reasons why. Now, like I said, Jamal Murray's been dealing with some knee soreness, but he's probable today. I expect him to play and today's a great bounce back game against the Detroit Pistons because Murray, like I talked about, he's been bad. He sucked the last two games. He scored 16 and 14 points, shot five for 19 and five for 18 from the field. Yeah, he got to play some really tough defenses. The Nets and Raptors, two teams, very pesky, have very good defenders against opposing guards and wings, but still, 5 for 19 and 5 for 18, that's below 30% in two straight games. So I like him to bounce back tonight against the Pistons. And the Pistons, let's be honest, they don't play the greatest defense. They like to play fast and they're going to give up a lot of points. Over the last 10 games, though, Pistons have actually been a pretty decent defense in terms of running people off the three-point line. In fact, they've allowed just the second fewest three-pointers made over the last 10 and the third fewest three-point attempts. Now, you could look at Jamal Murray, guy that kind of relies on the three-pointer, but Jamal Murray can score in every facility, every spot of the game. He can hit mid-ranges, can he go to the free-throw line, get to the rim. That's what I want. I don't want Jamal Murray settling for three-pointers. Now, if he gets hot, he could easily hit this in one half, but I'd rather him settling for the mid-range shots or getting to the rim, getting to the free-throw line, because this Pistons team doesn't have great rim protection with James Wiseman down below. Now, you could argue this could be a blowout as the Nuggets enter as 12 and a half or 13-point favorites, but I don't see them getting there without Jamal Murray at least playing pretty well. And over those last eight games, despite dealing with some knee soreness since his return from injury over the last eight, He's averaged 20 and a half points per game, but heavily weighed down by three bad games when he scored 11, 14, and 16 points. The other five games, he hit the over, scored 21 or more in all those games. And of the three games he went under, he shot less than 30% from the field in all three. And those were against the Bulls, Nets, Raptors. Three very, very good defenses post All-Star break. Against the bad defense like the Pistons, I think they get him cooking. And over the last 25 games, we've seen Murray over this line in 14 of 25. While it's not the best hit rate, still averaged 22.3 points per game. Of the last 11 that he went under, 
Murray shot less than 40% in seven games. And while he's shooting 45% on the year, all we can ask is for a guy to go out there and shoot the ball. Murray's normally a guy that's shooting the ball. And we've seen guards, 18 in the last 25 guards with 15 or more field goal attempts against Detroit have hit this over. So Murray, I don't anticipate him to suddenly not shoot the ball tonight. They need to get him going. This is a Nuggets team that's really been struggling recently. And I think they need to get Murray going as they get into the home stretch of the season. And they kind of need to get back on the winning track. On the winning track. Now we look at when I was on Twitter, I logged on. Almost everyone is on Jokic's over in points. And while I'm not saying fade Jokic tonight, the fact that they had set his line to 21 and a half despite him scoring like 28 plus and three straight. I think it's a good indicator that I think the books are expecting maybe the Pistons to sell out to stop Jokic and maybe we see the just Jokic in pass mode trying to facilitate, try to get his teammates going in this game in a game they should win. So I like Jamal Murray. I like him. I think he has a big bounce back day, maybe scores 25 or more points, but we'll take his over at 20 and a half. Hopefully this line is reasonable by the time you're seeing this, but I really do like Jamal Murray. I think he has a big bounce back night. We'll ride with him today. So those are my three favorite plays. DeAndre Ayton's over, Scotty Barnes under, and Jamal Murray's over. Those three plays, hopefully we can go 3-0, and have a third straight winning day, continue the 6-1 and run we are on. Day three of the ladder challenge is in the lab. We're cooking it up right now, so if you want to check it out, I'll link it right here once it is live. should be live around 11 a.m. Eastern time, probably 12 p.m. at the latest. So appreciate you guys as always. Thanks for showing all the tons of love and support. If you want to support the channel, go become a COS All-Star. Hit that join button down below, and you get all our plays early. You guys are great. Have a great day. MLB starts in two weeks, so you have those daily videos and March Madness. Enjoy it. Enjoy the NBA. We'll see you guys back again tomorrow. Peace out.